I love my husband, but he has to constantly be taken care of. And right now, I'm mostly his caregiver. Doug lives with his wife and the father of three young kids, but in many ways, he's his wife's fourth child. Doug's eating habits are shocking. I don't even try to portion control him. It's no surprise that Doug can eat a lot and his wife has given up trying to control his portions. Time for breakfast. All right. <laughs> Yes. We see this on full display with his breakfast. Just an absurd amount of bacon, eggs, pancakes, and what is most likely gravy covering every last square inch of that plate. I never tell him no if he wants seconds because he's gonna get it anyway. While it's not shown on tape, Doug's wife Ashley says that he usually gets seconds for breakfast, so I'm sure that isn't all he ate for the start of the day. Are you hungry? Yeah. What do you want? Um, pizza. It gets worse though when Doug goes out to grab lunch for the family. I can roll through a drive through pizza place, pick up a pizza, and I'm on my way. All my family knows about is the meal I'm bringing home. They don't know about how many other meals I can eat before I get back. He heads to a local pizza place and orders enough food for everyone, but once he gets home, it's clear that he's having a bit more than everyone else. It's like any drug addiction. You know you shouldn't have done it. The only way to not feel bad about it is to do it again. Doug makes his way to his recliner and actually drops off an entire pizza on his TV tray. This is a pretty big pizza too. It's definitely not meant to be a one-person pie. It's a very selfish way to live. Just thinking about how it affects me and not thinking about how it affects anybody else. Once I start eating, I can't get enough and I won't stop until it's all gone. And as if that wasn't enough, Doug appears to get an entire order of breadsticks all for himself. Well, we don't see him eat all of them, so maybe it's just the editing, but it sure doesn't look like he was sharing a single bite on that plate. Good morning. Good morning, Mom. What would you like for breakfast, darling? Ryan, age 31, has been living with his mother, Tammy, and her boyfriend, Leroy, for the past few years. Every morning, Tammy makes Ryan breakfast, and this morning, Ryan wants a lot to eat. A couple breakfast burritos, some sausage and bacon, and a bagel. Sausage and bacon? Yeah. Bagel, cream cheese? Please. This is a lot of food, but the reason this clip is on the list isn't because of the food itself, but rather the way Ryan describes the process of eating. When I eat, I never want to stop and I never feel like I have to because I've never really felt like I was full. By the time that I finish the meal that I'm eating, I'm already thinking about the next meal. Like when I'm eating breakfast, I ask my mom what we're having for lunch. Later on, Tammy brings home some takeout and you can see just how much Ryan eats compared to the rest of the family. But it still does depress me at times. The fact that I'm 31 and living with my mom. So I just eat to forget about it and not think about it. But that's what's killing me. By my count, he's got three trays of lasagna and a seemingly endless supply of sauces and or soups, while Tammy and Leroy only have a single container apiece. Bring me a um, plate and my oranges out of the refrigerator. I'm not a mom to them right now. I'm just a burden. Mila relies on her kids for everything, including a sizable breakfast to start the day. And I know I'm doing this to them because I won't stop eating. Looks like we've got two sausage, egg, and cheeses on a biscuit to go along with some tater tots. Honestly, it's not the worst thing that you could eat if you do it on occasion, but it's clear she eats something like this every single day. Love you. Drive safe. Jacob, put a jacket on. The bus is here. And making her kids do all of this for her while they have to go to school, it's just ridiculous. And Mila knows it. Hannah, I need you to come let's go this grocery list, please. They have to run all the errands and do everything. Now that the kids are back from school, it's time for them to go to the supermarket. You can get a 12 pack of the peach sodas. Two 12 packs will be fine. Ice cream bars, please. Okay. Boy, just look at all that junk food. She's asking for ice cream, 12 packs, and when the kids finally get home, Mila is going through what appears to be an entire bag of wrapped candy dumped on her chest. When I want them to bring me something I crave, I know that that's what's keeping me in this bed. I feel for these kids. Nobody should have to grow up like this. The second I open my eyes, I'm just in so much pain, but I'm still just grateful to be alive. James lives with his girlfriend, Lisa, and daughter, Bailey, and he's been bedridden ever since he hurt his ankle. I worry about James because every year it seems like he gains 20 or 30 more pounds. It's breaking my heart and I can't really take it much longer. I bought this food and I carry the food to him. To start the episode, Lisa and Bailey come home with a whole lot of groceries, preparing to make a meal for the family, but mostly for James. I got your cookies. You want one? 
hold you over? Yeah. I know my family's really worried about how much I eat, but when I'm hungry, I better get what I want or I'm really gonna be upset, especially in the morning at breakfast. After Lisa gives him a cookie just to tide him over, we start to see what's in store for breakfast. I've got you um, six eggs uh, and about five or six pieces of sausage. Is that okay? That's what it takes to make him Full. Lisa is preparing sausage, eggs, and biscuits, all covered in gravy, and there's so much food for James, she needs to give it to him in two separate installments. First comes the bowl of shredded food. Once that's prepared, Lisa gets to work on the main course. Six eggs and six pieces of sausage, all just for James. Put the, that gravy on my plate with a new biscuit. One for now, or? No, two. Two. Well, gravy all over the top. Of course, that's not enough, and James asks for two additional biscuits on top, all smothered in gravy. I always feel guilty, because we just keep giving food to him. It looks good, baby. When I tell him he doesn't eat it, and he'll get mad, and he'll yell. It makes me angry and sad at the same time. I'm so frustrated. Bailey knows that this is too much food, but Lisa just won't hear it. Everything is such a struggle. It's just painful to move around right now. As is the case with most stars of this show, even the most basic of daily tasks can lead to extreme pain and exhaustion. And David is no exception. My back hurts, my knees hurt, my feet hurt. The only thing that keeps me going is all the food we just bought. While out and about, you can see how the simple exercise of walking around has completely wore him out and he needs to make multiple stops throughout the trip. After being pushed to my limits, I usually need something immediate. Hi, can I get two number fours? Uh, let me get one more double bacon western cheeseburger. Tired and in pain, David says that he needs something to help rejuvenate himself and makes a pit stop at the fast food joint on the way home. <sighs> I'm scared that David doesn't have an internal motivation. At this point, Robin comes over and brings a whole smorgasbord of food and drinks just for David. It's typical fast food fare, and it's just the insane portioning that earns it a spot on this list. I miss being able to do simple things for myself. But it's just not possible anymore. Sean suffered an injury eight years prior to filming that left him mostly bedridden, but that doesn't mean that he can't find good food when he needs to. I keep snacks under my covers just to make sure I have something nearby when I want to eat. Leaving snacks under your bed. God, I can only imagine the smell. And then it's time for lunch. What do you want? Um, uh, just a couple burgers and soda. Maybe medium fry? Oh, um, could you give me one of those uh, caramel sundaes? Sure, no problem. That's a big order, and it's fast food, so it's extra bad. Sometimes it's just easier to give him what he wants, and unfortunately, I do that all the time. I've had people tell me, you don't have to give him food just because he says he's hungry. But I'm a mom, and when your kids say, I'm hungry, mom, you want to feed a kid. Look, I'm sorry, I'm not buying the excuse that, as a mother, you need to feed your kid whenever they say they're hungry. Doing that is clearly killing Sean. Of course, that's only lunch, and dinner is equally unhealthy. Unfortunately, the food that I love to eat and the addiction that I now have is killing me. Pizza sounds good. Pizza sounds good. That is a huge pizza, and he eats the whole thing like it's nothing. I know they edited the footage a bit, but I think it's safe to assume it didn't take him all that long to eat the entire pie. You done? Can I have a couple pieces of yours? Sure. And then he eats most of his mom's. Come on, man. Coming out of the basement is probably the hardest thing I do all day. So I usually only go up once. And then when I go back down, that's it for the day. After leaving his parents' basement and heading upstairs, Mike begins his day by ordering breakfast. Like a lot of breakfast. What can I do for you? I got a pretty big order. So the first one, I'm gonna get the Lumberjack Slam Pack. Uh, one of those ultimate omelets. Order the cinnamon roll pancakes. Will there be anything else? The double moons over my hammy sandwich. And then to drink, I want, I want I want two chocolate milks. If that sounds like a huge order, that's because it is. Take a look at all of it laid out on the counter. Yeah. Chinese tonight. Okay. Oh, good. His mother and father bring him back some Chinese food for dinner at the end of the day. As you'd expect from a man that can eat that much breakfast, he has a little bit more for dinner than his parents do. I'm a single mother. 
of five children, and I don't know what I weigh. Cynthia lives with her five children, and at first glance, her eating habits aren't horrific. My biggest thing right now is just being a better mother. But my weight limits me so much, so I want to lose the weight. But when the cravings come, all I want to do is eat. Sure, they're not good, as she begins her day with a whole bunch of toast, bacon, sausage, and eggs. It's served buffet style for the whole family, but I think it's safe to assume that Cynthia has had more than her fair share. If I don't do something drastic, something now, I'll die at an early age. I need to be here for my kids. Nobody else is here. They don't have anything else. Later on for dinner, the family comes together to enjoy yet another meal. Once again, it's not the healthiest thing in the world, but fried chicken, corn, and bread isn't the craziest thing we've seen on this show. Because of my weight, we have adjusted as much as we can to make this work, but it's progressively getting worse. What does make this all so crazy, however, is that her little daughter had to prepare everything all by herself. When I see my mom hurting a lot, it makes me feel bad. It's really heartbreaking and sad. I don't know what I would do if she died or so she was stuck in the bed or something. I will hardly be healthy. This wasn't a one-time thing either, as we also saw her daughter preparing breakfast in the morning. My family is my life. At her size, Cynthia is simply incapable of preparing meals and has to rely on her 11-year-old daughter to handle a large portion of the day-to-day -day chores, including cooking. So I only get up for limited things, really. The main one being to cook. That's one of my passions. Julian Valentine weighs over 800 pounds at the start of filming, and it's easy to see why. The man is a self-professed master chef, and cooking is one of the few joys he has in life. I would have to say that my favorite meal that Julian cooks for me, salmon when he cooks it in butter, and then he makes asparagus next to it and Brussels sprouts. Interestingly enough, his wife, Irma, describes her favorite meal he makes, and it actually sounds pretty healthy. If he made meals like that, he might might not have ever reached his current weight. He's very good at making meals that taste good. The dynamic right now is that he makes whatever he wants and that's what we eat. Unfortunately, it's clear that he does not make the healthy food all that often. And Irma even says that they basically eat whatever Julian feels like cooking on that particular day. I wait until around 12 o'clock to eat lunch and then I'll snack until dinner. But I feel the best meal of each day is usually the first. The food itself that Julian makes constitutes a typical breakfast. You know, pancakes, bacon, eggs, that sort of thing. But look at how much food he's actually making. And this is just how he starts his day. Julian also says that he has lunch at noon and keeps snacking from then until dinner. When I go out to shop for my sister, all I wanna do is get to the candy aisle. Randy knows he weighs over 600 pounds by now, and one trip to the supermarket tells us why that is. Anything sweet is my weakness. This is my favorite section. Why do you need all that candy? Because candy is something that I love. Yeah, that's a lot of sweets. And kudos to his sister for at least trying to stop him from buying all that. We got everything? Yeah, I'm ready. Me, you need those for you. Because I can. They're mine. They're going in my room. But just look at the way Randy acts. As long as he's physically able to go to the supermarket, he won't let anyone stop him from buying that junk food. I just take it to my room and eat alone. You know, I just don't want to stop. It just, everything tastes good and you never get that full feeling, so you just want to keep going. Now, we have to make a few assumptions here thanks to the editing, but based on what his sister said earlier, I think it's safe to assume that Randy ate the vast majority of the candy he just bought, and then he went for the pie. Even if I've just had something and I see something I want, I still eat that. I'll wait till everyone's out of the house or fine, and I'll go eat. Whatever we just bought that's in the kitchen too. Nothing else exists while I'm eating. And when it stops, I'm just looking for the next time I can eat. Again, I don't know how much of it he ate, but even one slice after all that candy is just too much. When I imagined my life at 30, I thought I would have my white picket fence. I'd have kids. But my life is nothing like that. We're starting this off with Ashley, the first episode of the season. I can't do anything on my own. So my husband and I have to live with my parents and my sisters. I'm ashamed of living with my parents at this age. Ashley has put on some weight in recent years, forcing her and her husband, Daniel, to move back in with Ashley's parents. Each year I kept gaining more weight. We had to stop doing what we normally do because I wasn't able to do it anymore. Unfortunately, my weight has now made him my caretaker. After taking a shower, Daniel brings Ashley some lunch, take out from a fast food restaurant. I don't know if you want an onion ring surprise. 
So I got both. Here's your soda. I want to make her comfortable and happy. What makes Ashley happy is when she's enjoying food. It's your usual fare, burgers and such, but Daniel brings her an order of fries and an order of onion rings to go with a giant soda. My family doesn't just eat, we feast. Food has always been a comfort for all of us. I always make a ton of food. Once Ashley gets back from work, it's time for dinner, and she warns us that it's going to be a lot of food before we even get to see the meal. Eating just soothes me. It always has. And especially when I'm really stressed out and I'm emotional, I just want to eat. Sure enough, we finally see the meal and well, we see she isn't joking. The food is healthy enough as Ashley's plate is features chicken, rice, and broccoli, but it's how much she eats that earns her a spot on this list. I never talk to Ashley about her weight because it's a sensitive subject, but I am sad for her. I feel like one day Ashley won't wake up and I couldn't even say bye to her. Her sister Alexis openly expresses her concern for Ashley's overindulgence at meals. Food is more than just a pleasure. It's my reason for existing. I can't wait for the first bite of something that will make me forget about all the misery of my life. How many eggs is too many eggs? Trick question, there's no such thing, at least to Dolly. While cooking breakfast for her and her best friend, Dolly uses 15 eggs just for the two of them. Oh my God, Dolly. I'll take an Italian cream one too. I can't believe she had to have that. My mom tries to make me get more fruits and vegetables and meats. Later, while at the supermarket with Shanine and her mother, her mother is clearly dismayed at the food she's buying. Dolly's food addiction is sad, if, if you really think about it, because that's been like a best friend most of her life. While her mother is frustrated, she admits that her daughter is battling addiction and that it's truly heartbreaking when you stop and think about it. At this point in my life, I know that I am uh, killing myself with food and I know that it's an addiction. My worst fear is that I die and my daughter lives on and she wonders what life could have been like with mom. I will not let that happen to my daughter. Later on, Dolly herself admits that she has a problem and we all know that the first step to beating addiction is admitting that you have a problem. For two decades, I've been over 500 pounds. Being this size is the only life I've known. Lupe lives with her boyfriend, Gilbert, and the day starts off with a trip to the donut store. It didn't have donut holes. So what'd you get? I had, don't get mad, but I had to get the other one. Which one do you want? Look. No, I don't know. Okay, go ahead. Let's pick. Give me a plate. And a plate. Right, the plates. Look at that box. It is stuffed to the brim. And I think Gilbert only has one or two of these donuts. Imagine if they had those donut holes. I want another half. I'll be taking more insulin later. And talking about taking insulin right after taking donuts? That's literally straight from Always Sunny. And if you ever find yourself living like Mac, you've got some serious trouble. I really try not to give her as much food as she wants. But if I don't do it, She'll find her niece or someone to do it for her. Gilbert's not the only one delivering food, though, as Lupe also gets her niece to bring her a light lunch. Can you go get me some Yeah. You can get me two super nachos, the carne asada ones, two lengua burritos, and a beef taco and a lettuce. If that sounds like a big order for you, just wait until you see it all laid out. Sometimes I'll order me an extra taco and put it in my purse. Gilbert, you don't even know. I don't know how to change. She says she's lying to Gilbert about this, but he clearly knows what's up here. All in all, it's a terrible situation and doesn't make me want to order Mexican anytime soon. As soon as I get up in the morning, I gotta eat something or I feel like I'm gonna throw up. So I keep something to snack on in my room, but I still can't get up to get it myself. Nicole's first meal of the day starts before she even leaves her room. She knows that she feels like she has to vomit before she eats in the morning, so she keeps chips in her bedroom. However, she depends on her boyfriend, Charlie, to get it for her. So my parents live with us to help take care of me and my two kids. Usually it's Charlie who helps me in the morning. We can see that breakfast is already underway, but we don't actually get to see the whole meal. We do, however, get to see Nicole and Charlie shop for dinner. Shopping for food is the only fun thing I could do. Even though it's very difficult to get around, I truly love of shopping for food. To see all the selections and options makes it worth how hard it is. Even though they're only buying one meal, we see the couple pick up two big liters of soda, chips, and a whole bunch more.
more, including some candy at the register. I absolutely love to cook, and I take my food very seriously. And when I want something particular, I won't let anyone else make it because it has to be done exactly right so it tastes as good as it should. Once they're home, Nicole begins prepping meatloaf from the comfort of her couch while Charlie makes mac and cheese. Nicole's behavior with food is not normal. If she is hungry, she wants food, she wants it now. I want some now. When I give her large portions, I know it's hurting her. I know it's damaging her body, but I see that she's happy, and I would do anything to make Nicole happy. At first, it appears as though Charlie's going to bring Nicole a plate of mac and cheese and potatoes, and then he adds the single biggest slice of meatloaf I have ever seen on top of everything. I mean, come on, just look at that. When it comes to food, it's my comfort and my addiction. Most of the entries on this list are about the quality of food being eaten rather than the food itself. Bianca throws a wrench into that with her dinner plans, but let's start with breakfast. Baby, this some more pancakes left? No, no, hell no, ain't no more. You ain't getting no more. Mm. He's slow down. Slow down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For what? Bianca lives with her boyfriend Ramonte and the two had weight loss surgery a few years ago. Ramonte was able to keep his weight off. As you can see, it's normal enough breakfast, but that won't be the case for dinner. Mm, but a bread. Ramonte is back on the stove making, well, I don't even know what you would call this. He starts by removing garlic bread from the oven and putting it at the bottom of the plate and pouring some spaghetti on top. Yeah, I know you want to put it in hot sauce too. No, I don't want a hot sauce, I want ranch. Apparently that's dinner. She seems to like it though, as they have two very full plates while her two children eat considerably less. Darius, I need you to go to the grocery store. Oh, my right now. Teresa can't get out of bed anymore, so she sends her son and diabetic husband to go to the supermarket and pick up a few items. I'm gonna make a list, Darius, please go buy the list. And I want everything up on this list. I can't get up to get the food, so I have my family bring me what I want. I want some cookies, double stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what I want. I'm putting it on here. The ice cream sandwiches, the nail polish, the ice cream sandwiches, lasagna, the big red box. Oh, I want a cake. That's it. Okay, thank you. Look at that demanding tone. You can tell the family doesn't want to get her what she's getting, but she won't accept anything else. I know what she eats is not healthy, but I don't want to argue and disrespect my mom. Even after hearing the list, it's still wild to see all that unhealthy food all in one cart. Having to walk through the produce section to get to the cakes is especially ironic. If I have a craving, they will give me what I want. And my favorite thing is chicken. The supermarket wasn't the only trip Teresa's son made, as he also picked up some fried chicken on the way home. Thank you. Baked, fried, barbecue, chicken. That is so, so, so much chicken. And having that on top of everything else, just how could you eat that much? I'm sorry, but it's just insane. There isn't a moment where I'm not craving something to eat. No matter what I'm facing, food will make it better. Nathan begins every day by making breakfast, and you can see that he's loaded up. When I'm eating, it's euphoric. It's like this feeling of relief from whatever negative emotion I have going on at that time. And so even though a meal like this will make me really full, I'll keep eating and eating. The former theater teacher makes two whopping plates loaded with sausage, biscuits, eggs, and bacon. Hey. Hey. Thank you for picking up the food. Welcome. His wife, Amber, brings home takeout for dinner, which isn't bad on its own, but she does talk about how much his eating habits disgust her. He would eat his food. He would eat an appetizer. We would have a dessert. He would eat my leftovers, and it would make me just absolutely just disgusted. When Nathan decided he didn't want to try and lose weight anymore, I told him I was disgusted with what he was doing, and I basically told him he was an embarrassment. Listening to how he normally eats is easily enough to justify a spot on this list. When you get to be this size, you're definitely broken mentally. I mean, I know I'm fat, and I have the ability to change it, but I can't stop eating, because when I'm eating, it's the only time I get relief from the physical pain. As you can tell, Mark is trapped in the spiral of food addiction, knowing that he's his own worst enemy and can't overcome the short-term highs he gets from a good meal. Hey, good morning, how are you doing? Good, what are you thinking for breakfast? We got eggs and waffles, I think a uh, little bit of chorizo. Oh, okay. Thanks, Mama. I'll see you in a minute. Mark's mother is making breakfast, and now it's time for the feast to commence. My dad tells me what to do, but it has a reverse influence on me. Did you guys already eat? Uh, yeah, yeah. There's that. Thank you, Mama. You're welcome. The more 
you come at me like that, the more it makes me want to eat and go down that road. Like, it's always been a steady uphill struggle. We've got eggs that are basically drowning in cheese, a huge side of chorizo, and he's combining them both to make his own little breakfast burritos because you just needed to have those extra bread carbs. The grocery store, it sucks. Just finding a trolley that I could sit in. It's like, whew, give me a minute. I don't know how that's gonna fit. This isn't gonna work. You're gonna have to get up and push a cart. I can't. You gotta push a cart, Mark. That's all you can do. You know you've let yourself go when you're too big for the motorized carts at the supermarket. I know if something doesn't change, I don't have long. I rode the scooter behind him so that he could take a break. I try not to enable him any longer. They got ice cream down there? Just one of those or two? But I still do so often. We can't live this life. We can't continue to live this life. It's a hard road. We don't see everything Mark and his father buy, but we do see enough to know that absolutely none of it is healthy. I mean, the first thing he does is grab three sodas, then get two boxes of ice cream. Mark can manipulate me and Rocky both for the food, mostly me because I feel so darn sorry for him. We are not making Mark pay any rent any utilities, nothing. We are not holding them accountable. I'm really excited. This could really change your life. No, I'm not going through all this for no reason. <laughs> Good. You know what? We'll go through it together. And now the family is having a big cookout, and once again, I don't think Dr. Nile's gonna want him eating that. Barbecue meat isn't great, but it can be fine in moderation, but the key word there is moderation. Comfortable? I am, yeah, this is nice. It's a new beginning. Are we eating or are we gonna get uh, on the road? Yeah, we're gonna get on the road, but we'll get the gas. His first trip to Dr. Now has barely begun and he's already asking for a meal. Well, maybe he can make it a healthy one, seeing as he's going to meet a weight loss doctor. I'm really struggling with wanting to eat, even though I know I'm gonna get weighed when I get to Dr. Now's. Is it good, Mark? It's okay, it gets the job done, right? What's the job? Food. Food? Oh, come on, dude, seriously? A cheeseburger and fries? Look, I know you haven't officially met Dr. Now yet, but you should know that this is the type of food you need to quit if you ever want to lose weight. I'm usually here alone most of the day. It's it's lonely. That's why I love eating with my family. It makes me feel, you know, a part of something. How's it going, Sean? Going good. Sausages are cooking, egg is cooking. Food is not only Stephanie's escape from chronic pain, but it's also how she spends most of the time with her family. And oh lord, with that much food, you're gonna be spending a whole lot of time with your family, because nobody can eat that quickly. The smell is making me more hungry. Yeah, I don't know how much syrup you want on there. I'm constantly thinking about food. Yeah. I love just how delicious it tastes, how happy it makes me feel, how like it melts away my, my thoughts. It brings me to life when I eat. The first plate has a few waffles and they just leave her the whole bottle of syrup as if she's gonna need it. Then we've got a serving plate filled to capacity with bacon and sausage. And then the busiest plate of them all has eggs. And well, I'm not quite sure what that is. It might be some kind of breakfast pie, but I don't know. If you have any idea what that is, let me know down in the comments below. But I feel safe saying that that is not good for you. I put the arms up for you. Is the seat all the way back? Yeah. Yeah, you might have to push me even if it's wheels. I know. Mm. I know it's gonna go up the hill. Well, you might have to push me up the hill. <laughs> it's the part I don't like. I forgot it's hard on the hill. Yes. This is embarrassing. <laughs> this is why I don't come. <laughs> the motorized cart might not have enough juice to push Stephanie around the supermarket, which is obviously a pretty big sign that she might need some help. Can we go to the bakery first? Okay. I'm gonna look at the cakes. I have them. Oh no, don't start out with the cakes. It won't make the cart's life any easier. Okay, anything else that I can reach? Right there, the fudge. Ice cream is my favorite. All right, and then the pizza over there. Oh yeah, and that's it. Uh, on your dip. That's all you want? Yeah. You sure? Okay. And as it turns out, the cakes were just the starting point. Just from the footage alone, we see her load up on fudge, ice cream, pizza, and chips, and I'm sure that's just the beginning of all the bad stuff they got. There's your pizza. My life's completely out of control, but I know I need to lose the weight so I can live longer, be healthy. I'm killing myself at this point. And if that wasn't enough, we're having pizza for dinner. Judging by the footage, it's just four slices, but even that is a lot. And once again, I've got to emphasize that this is all just one day's worth of food. I don't want to die. I'm not ready, but I can't do it on my own. Here you go, mama. 
Thank you. I need help. And sure, why not close out the day with some cake in bed? Boy, Dr. Nile has his work cut out for him here. Getting dressed is the most difficult part of my day. So Amanda has to do it all for me. She's got to put my socks on. She has to help me put my shorts on, which is just humiliating. By the time I'm showered and dressed, all I can think of is my first meal. At Patrick's size, getting showered and changed isn't easy, and apparently he feels like he needs to reward himself with a big, healthy breakfast. Well, maybe not healthy, but definitely big. Do you need help in the kitchen? You could actually get the sausage out if you would like. I live with my wife and my 16-year-old daughter, Haley. If she does stay with her mom, she'll still come back and forth throughout the day and see me, knowing that I needed some help. Looks good. You need anything else? No, mm -hmm, I should I'm be good. good. Okay. Okay, verdict's in. Definitely not healthy. Just take a look at that platter. By my count, he's got at least five waffles, four sausage patties, and a whole lot of tater tots. And he's also using the waffles as a type of wrap for the sausage patties. While I do admire the resourcefulness there, it's definitely not a healthy way to get through the day. Corn dogs and tater tots, good for you? Sounds good to me. You wanna cook the corn dogs in the oven? Yes, sir. Well, now it's time for dinner, and that can't possibly all be for Patrick, can it? That's just way too much food. If I don't lose weight, I feel like in a year or two years, I'll wind up, it'll wind up killing me. Looks good, babe. Enjoy. Oh, I am. Oh my God, it is all for him. Every single thing on that plate is fried, which is obviously bad, but that is so much food that I almost can't believe it. I'm hitting the road, headed to Texas to go see the doctor about getting weight loss surgery. I've never driven this far, period. I'm nervous, I'm worried. Don't know what's gonna happen. I mean, I'm going to see a doctor I've never seen, going to Texas, I ain't never been to Texas. Just haven't never been that far away. Patrick's now heading off to Dr. Now's, so maybe all the bad eating we saw was just his last hurrah before kicking off the diet. I'm just tired of being fed. Do you have anything in mind about what you want for dinner tonight? Some kind of drive through <laughs> Okay, well, never mind. You ready? Yeah. I want a uh, number nine. I want it large sized. Then I want a, another number nine, no pickles. I want it large sized with a sweet tea, regular side of red beans and rice, a regular side of macaroni and cheese, just to order a popcorn shrimp and an extra chicken sandwich with no pickles. Would that be all for you? Yes, ma'am. Dude, come on. I get that eating healthy on a road trip isn't easy, but you've got to try harder than that. There's your popcorn shrimp. And then here's your sandwiches. Red beans and rice are pretty good too. They make it better if I had a biscuit to go with it. So he had the entire box of popcorn shrimp and two large sandwiches. Not exactly the kind of thing you should be eating less than a day before you meet a weight loss surgeon for the first time. 